Ah! Unbelievable, this country, they'll steal anything. Hello, welcome to Go Open. Uh, I am John Vismas, and I've seen the, the victim of a vicious crime. My hair has been stolen by wig thieves in downtown Johannesburg. Thanks for joining us. Uh, it's going to be a brilliant program, and, uh, and thank you for watching. Uh, we really want to thank everyone who's been watching this program. Today, we lift the lid on the shady world of computer security. Then we get really small and look at embedded systems. Essentially, these are systems that are inside something. That's exactly what they technically are. Open source software exists as a result of the combined efforts of millions of computer programmers, users and software vendors from around the world. They share their intellectual property freely and they believe that software should cost nothing and should enrich the lives of users. Open source software is the alternative and biggest challenger to closed source or proprietary software. It generally costs the user nothing. It can be distributed freely to anyone. Download it, use it, modify it, and give it away. It's a whole new world. Open source is the future of computing. They say the only secure computer in the world is one that's been unplugged, taken out, juggled around, whipped in, put in a hotel, all the numbers of the rooms are taken off and shoved around, and then that's at the bottom of a dark cave in the ocean under a volcano, under a rock. Um, but that's not really true, because there are ways to guard against your data, or even worse, your identity. Because if you haven't got your name, what have you got? And being stolen. And uh, you can still use your computer with relative ease and safety. And to find out more about that, let's speak to that guy. He's gorgeous. He's so hot. Mmm. Mark Chase. What happens when you wake up a zombie? It becomes a bot. And how do zombies get there? Usually it's worms that do the dirty deed. Zombies, bots, worms, spiders, backdoors, and trojans. Scary sounding names for a scary phenomenon. Not only can your data be corrupted or destroyed, but your computer can be hijacked for malicious use, or your personal information can be stolen. Computer security is everyone's business. Computing without security or computing without trust implies don't do computing at all. Because if you don't practice safe computing, it's only a matter of time before you're attacked. In 2000, uh, Deloitte did a, a study in which we put um, a Linux machine and a Windows machine, both running web servers and databases, in their default configurations on the internet. We found that they were both compromised within the first half hour, and from then on they were compromised regularly again and again. These attacks often came from programs called spiders. They're designed to troll the internet and look for open ports, like a thief looking for open doors, and then report back to their authors. People will break into a system because it's vulnerable not because of what technology it's running, nor what information it contains. Not all attacks are malicious. It could be curious computer students exploring the internet, but then it could be spammers who want to use your computer for relaying junk mail, or criminals who are out to steal your identity. There are a lot of uh, software available on the internet today that can enable a lot of people just to uh, you know, commit identity theft. It's software called spyware that operates in the background, logging keystrokes and mouse clicks and sending this information back to its author. That's how your credit card details, PIN numbers and passwords can fall into the hands of someone who can then transact on your behalf. A hacker would probably not try and hack into a bank. Um, the banks probably got big security systems at play. If you can hack the man at home's system, you've got a trusted relationship by proxy straight into the bank. Most common vulnerabilities are found through two ways. One is malconfiguration or weak configuration of the operating system and the network services that it offers, where somebody with specially customized code can run programs against these services and use that as an entry point to break into the machine and become the administrator of that machine. And with that access, they now have total control over the system and can access all data on it and then also use it as a launching pad for attacks on other systems. Let's talk about open source versus proprietary security software. As soon as a vulnerability is announced or declared in the market, the world community of the open source community is responding now. And they're responding firstly by announcing it and secondly they're responding by recommended ways to address the problem. In the commercial software world, your time to respond tends to be cloaked by a lot of commercial issues. And, and that's one of the reasons why security systems themselves tend to be based on open source technologies. But no matter what you do, the weakest link is always the human element. 
often during penetration testing exercises, security consultants will send out uh, emails to the users in the organization and they will contain a, a malicious attachment. We find on average around about 10% of these programs will be executed and uh, they allow us to bypass all the firewalls and other perimeter security devices that are in place in organizations. So it just goes to show that it takes one user's mistake to get in. The uh, organization has to lock every single door, but we only have to find one unlocked door to get in. Well, security is everyone's business, it seems. Uh, every week we bring you some international opinion, and this week we speak to a man uh, that the US government chose to examine Homeland Security after 911, as well he should, was in a bit of a shoddy state. He's a security guru, and his name, no really, I'm serious, is Bruce Schneier. Let's jump right into it, Bruce. You being a security expert, how important is security? Well, if you think about the promise of the Internet, it's to mirror everything we do in the real world. And so really the limits of security become the limits of the Internet. What has uh, one learnt through uh, increased security required on all levels, from ground up all the way through to computers? Well, I think we've learned that most security measures don't work and a lot of security is simply selling to the public the idea of false security. I mean, in airline security is a great example. Pretty much everything that's been done since 9-11 is a complete waste of time with two exceptions. Uh, reinforcing the, air, the cockpit door and teaching passengers to fight back. And I say that because I look at security as a system. I look at the weakest link. I mean, if you spend billions of dollars defending your airplanes, then the terrorists move to shopping malls, you've wasted your money. You haven't actually solved the problem. In the computer world, we get that. We know it makes no sense to increase the key length of the cryptography if the operating system is bad. That we know the bad guys are going to go in through the vulnerabilities, and that fixing something else isn't going to make it better. How does an end user make sure that when he's downloading something which is free and for nothing initially, that he might not be downloading something which might also have a virus? Uh, the way to uh, avoid that is to only download from reputable sources. I mean, there are mechanisms, signing code, and, and they work for an intelligent user. But for an average user, that's going to be too complicated. Have you been looking into providing uh, open source packages with regards to security and antivirus software for those platforms? Well, right now we monitor open source products. We monitor the Linux operating system. We monitor Apache. Uh, we use Snort, an open source IDS, when we, uh, when we monitor some of our customers. Uh, we use Linux in our monitoring box because it's much easier for us to control it and make it more secure. We can strip out the things we don't need. So already we deal with open source. I'm a strong proponent of, of open source. I think it's done great things. I think it's done more to improve Microsoft security than anything else, just by being competition. Thank you once again for appearing uh, on Go Open. Well, good luck. Please stick around, because in a moment we're going to meet, are we going to find out about a box in a box in a garden, which sounds like a Pamela Anderson video when they took a trip to Botanical Gardens, but it's not. It's something quite fascinating. Things aren't always as they seem. Computers don't have to be a keyboard with a screen and a box with a thing and the... that's not what they have to do. They're all around us. Uh, embedded systems can be tiny and unobtrusive like the brains of British princes. And yet, even as small and crazy as they are, they're all around us. Computers all around us. Most people use computers in their everyday lives without even knowing it. DVD players, CD players, even VCRs all have computers. These are called embedded computers. Take my car, for instance. It tells me my temperature, my fuel range, even how far I have to go until my next service. Open source provides a way to develop these dedicated systems with all the benefits one would expect. Low cost, ease of customization, and open standards compatibility. 